Oh, Addie, can you hand out this map? So we got this map here. I got set up like a like a ski area. Easy drive to access will be green shaded areas. Blue is two to four miles in, and uh, black would be anything further than four miles or pretty much straight up the hill. The most prolific fish in the park are cutthroats and rope trout. Uh, we're going to start from the northeast corner of the park. Get to the north fork of the Big Thompson. You're going to go from Estes Park, drive down Dry Gulch Road until you come to Dunraven Road. Turn left on Dunraven Road, follow it all the way to the end. Hike about a mile and you'll go past the Chili Camp. And that's the north fork of the Big Thompson there, just outside of the park. It's got all four species in this area. It's going to have brook trout, rainbow trout, brown trout, and cutthroats. Occasionally, you'll catch a cutthroat in this area. If you continue on up the trail four miles, you'll come to the park entrance. Um, once you get in through the park, it's going to be mostly all brook trout in the river up there. As you keep going up, you'll come to Paradise. Uh, Campsite or Las uh, Las Meadows Sunset site, I guess. And we do a lot of model pack trips up in that area. If you go ten miles total, you'll come to Lost Lake. Lost Lake is an old used to have a dam on it. They took it out back in 1983, right after the Long Lake flood. Took all these high mountain dams out because of one dam the one dam failed. Uh, in Lost Lake, it's going to be mostly brook trout and cutthroat in it. Some days you catch all cutthroats, some days you catch all brook trout. Good area camp. You go about a half, uh, you go around the uh, left side of the lake, all the rock turns up, you go about a mile, you come to Houston Lake. Houston Lake is a real pretty lake. Um, it's probably got the biggest fish in the area. It's got cutthroat up to 18 inches in it, real pretty fish. You go about uh, another half mile past it, just follow the rock here, and you'll come to Lake Louise. Louise is a lot smaller lake. It's loaded with leeches in it, so any black woolly butter works well. Fish up to about 14 inches out of Louise. Real pretty fish up there. Favorite fly up in that area is a pearl elk hair caddis. Uh, the next drainage down will be McGraw. McGraw Ranch area. Cow Creek is the creek right there. To get there, you're going to drive down the old uh, Devil's Falls Road from Estes Park, turn off the McGraw Ranch Road, follow the road all the way to the end. Park there at the parking lot. This was right after the flood, so the road got washed out. But after that, it, it um, worked just fine. There we go. Now they got the road fixed now. This is Cow Creek in that area. It used to be full of beaver ponds in there and used to have fairly good sized brown trout in it. Right after the flood of 2013, um, there were some really big browns in there, but now it's just little tiny brown trout. So disregard this picture here. We used to catch these little guys, these pretty good sized guys after, after the flood, but now they're maybe up to six inches. But the main area you want to go to is West Creek. To get there, you're going to park there on the Robert Ridge Road. You can take the boundary trail two miles up and over the hill to get to West Creek. This is probably the best stream in the park. One of the best, I guess. Uh, so this is what it looked like before the flood. You can see all the vegetation around it. This is post 2013, this picture here after the flood. So it took a lot of the vegetation along the river out. It's a lot easier to cast now. And it seems like the fish population has gotten higher than it was before. Good pool there, right below the waterfall. And this is what the lower West Creek looks like. It used to be really a tough area to fish. Um, it used to be tight brush, really hard to fish it. After the flood, it took out all of that vegetation along the river. You could fish pretty much all of it in that area. It's going to be mostly brown trout and, uh, and brown trout brookies and cutthroats, occasional rainbow up there. 
in the brook trout in this area or some of the biggest brook trout in the, in the park, you'll get brook trout up to about 12 inches in there. They're really husky little fish. They grow pretty big in that section. Next drainage down is the Fall River. Fall River um, is a good area to catch the Grand Slam. You can catch your brown and rainbow down in the fall, and then your greenback or your cutthroat and brook trout up in the alluvial fan. So this, uh, this is Isaac with his Grand Slam there. So this is Horseshoe Park. So Horseshoe Park is right as you come in through the north entrance of the park on Highway 34. You'll see it over on your left. is a slow meandering section of the Fall River. Um, you're going to need long cast, delicate presentation, uh, long leaders. And so I like to just completely skip this section and go somewhere a lot easier. So get upstream where Highway 34 crosses over and hit areas where there's more gradient. You can sneak up on the fish a lot better in that area. <clears throat> If you continue up uh, Highway 34, like you're going up Trail Ridge Road, you'll come to Hidden Valley Ski Area. Coming out of Hidden Valley Ski, the old Hidden Valley Ski Area, and coming out of there, there's a little tiny creek, maybe two feet wide. What you want to do is cast your fly downstream, let it skim on the surface, set the hook when you get a bite, and generally you'll get a little flying fish like this, a little flying birdie. Going back down to the alluvial fan. So if you go on up, um, Highway 34 entrance, turn off on Old Fall River Road. You go about a mile and you go right over the alluvial fan here. You want to park right after you cross it and then just hike up into the falls there. So, this is what it looked like before the flood. And this is what it looked like after the 2013 flood. And then the, the bridge of the alluvial fan was created by Long Lake Dam breaking, and back in 1982, it created that big fan. Um, and it also created this lake right there, Fan Lake. And Fan Lake has eroded its way out since 1982. It's just a stream bed down in there now. But the main area you actually want to fish is up in the rocks there, right in the, in the boulders. And there's a bunch of cutthroats in there that came down from the Roaring River above. And you get birdies and cutthroats and browns in there and rainbows. So the stream has shifted though since 2013. It used to come here underneath that bridge. Now it's more to the south, but it still fishes well in there, good pools in there. Fish have come back since that flood. Best hole is gonna be right under the highway. Um, this is one of the only places in the park you can catch cutthroats by the road. And a uh, good area right there to catch the grass land. You can catch all four species right under the highway or over Fall River Road. We used to hike straight up and over the hill, up, 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 up the hill here to get up by Fish uh, Farm um, Creek. But I wouldn't recommend going straight up the, the, the river anymore. The boulders keep falling down. So take uh, Long Lake Trailhead and go 1.5 miles and you'll come up to Fish Lawn Bridge. And just fish right in that area. Um, not quite as many fish as there used to be before the flood, but you can generally catch one, maybe two fish out of every good hole. Real pretty cuts up in there. A lot less gradient in there, a lot easier to see the, where the fish would be. Um, favorite flying is a Schlatter Skull Man or a Chevy Chernobyl Man. All right, next spot we're going to talk about is if you continue on up that trail, turn left on Ypsilon, Ypsilon Trail, and you'll go five miles total. You'll come to Ypsilon Lake. Ypsilon Lake is loaded with cut bows in it, um, up to about 12 inches. Just walk the shore and look for fish. Cast out a deer hair ant, and you need to get one to bite. If you want to continue on up, go around the outlet of the lake. Stay about the same elevation as Ypsilon Lake and follow the rock turns on for one mile. You'll come to Bay Lake. Bay Lake is a short one mile bushwhack from, from Ypsilon Lake. It's loaded with a ton of fish in it, but any, any lake that has a lot of fish in it generally means the fish size are going to be smaller. I would say six to eight inches would be a good size fish out of that lake. Favorite fly in there is just a grip of snap. And what I like to do when I go up there is I have hike up and I fish Ypsilon, and I go over and fish Caddis, and then I follow Ypsilon Creek out, just kind of bush rock my way back down, straight down the hill, kind of get as fishy as I go, and then get to the roaring and the main trail from there. Real pretty cutthroats even in Ypsilon Creek. If you stand the main trail, Long Lake Trail, and you go through about 6.3 miles, you'll come to Long Lake. This is the lake that broke, the dam broke on it in 1982. 
had 18,000 CFS running down there is what caused that alluvial fan when the flood happened. So there's a big mock migration thing that goes on in, uh, in, in Long Lake in late July. So what you want to do is cast something big and cream color. I like the uh, Charlie Boy Hopper. And very bad presentations are better. Make it snack the water and those fish will come running. We do a lot of llama pack trips up in this area. Um, so you can have the llama carry your gear up and fish, fish at your leisure. One mile above Long Lake is Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake is the deepest lake in the park. It's over 200, 250 feet deep. It has a smaller population of fish in it, so this lake is going to have real good sized fish. This has the biggest fish in the park that I know of. You can catch cutthroats in it over 20 inches. There's me losing one. So I always have lost so many fish up there that if a client catches one, I will dive in after it for you. <laughs> They're just gorgeous fish up there. Big cutthroats. All right, the next range down is the uh, Upper Big Tee. This is probably the most fished area of the park, especially in the rain park there. To get there, you're gonna go up Highway 36 through the park entrance, turn left on Bear Lake Road, and just follow Bear Lake Road until it crosses the Big Thompson. This, that will be lower moraine after the three fingers of the river come back together right there. There's a little bit more gradient to it. It's a good area to fish late season. And the water's a little lower. Middle Moraine is a good area to fish. One of the best areas to fish in high water in the, in the park. So May and June, I would fish in Moraine. If the water's tea color, I like using the pink San Juan worms. If the water's low and clear, I like to use a red parachute uh, quill. Middle Moraine has a lot of oxbows and, and uh, the big deep, uh, deep cuts under the banks where some big grounds will hang out. So I like to use uh, streamers at, in that area. Probably the biggest brown trout in the park or in marine. You can, in fact, this fish here was 22 inches out of there off of the streamer. Upper marine, upper upper Big Tee is probably my favorite area in this section. Probably the most fished area in the park, I would say. If you want to fish upper marine, you want to follow the, the road all the way to Fern Lake Trailhead, and you got 1.8 miles that will follow the river along. I like to hike up maybe a half mile, get out the street. It's got really good gradient to it. It's easy to sneak up on the fish. The fish are everywhere in there, especially from mid-July on. When the water's a little lower, you can kind of get out in the middle and just kind of work your way up. Loaded with brook trout, um, browns, and cutthroats. Occasionally, you'll catch a rainbow. See a lot of, so this area got the, you struck with some fire came through it about a year and a half ago. So the vegetation is way, um, the trees and stuff are, have been cut back. It's a lot easier to fish. It did have some fish kill, but this last year, I would say, because the, the areas that the uh, fire opened up made it a lot easier to fish. I think it fished even better than it did last the year before. See a lot more elk in there, too, because the grass is growing so good after the fire. Favorite fly, and there's not a parable bass, but a stonefly stinny in an orange. All right, Forest Canyon is one of the more remote areas to get to the park. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, that trail up towards Spring Lake, come to the pool. It'll be about 1.8 miles to get to the pool. You go about another mile right before Fern Falls. The last switch back before Fern Falls, you're gonna turn right and you'll see a big mountain on your right and a big mountain on your left. You're just gonna kind of shoot in between those. And uh, that's how you kind of get back into Forest Canyon. It's about a mile and a half bushwhack, a really tricky bushwhack but it's well worth it when you get back there. Um, it's loaded with all green back cutthroats back in there um, up to about 10 inches and they are the dumbest fish you'll see anywhere. You can throw out a pine cone and normally get them to come up. So all you need is a fly that floats and it is durable because you're going to be catching a lot of fish. And my favorite fly is a Turks tarantula. It keeps floating. You don't have to keep looking, floating on it. It doesn't come apart. It doesn't work anywhere else I've ever fished, but it really works up there. Upper, upper Forest Canyon. If you get there, you're going to hike, uh, you're going to go drive up Trail Ridge Road to Forest Canyon Overlook and hike straight down the hill. It's 2,000 foot drop in a mile and a half. So it's pretty much straight down. Um, the only problem is you got to get back up. But pretty fishing there. 
Probably not worth the hike. <laughs> if you continue up the main trail, you'll come to Fern Lake. So you go to Fern Falls, it's three miles up. And you go another mile, you'll come to Fern Lake, 3.9 miles exactly to get there. This is one of the lower elevation lakes in the park, so you can get there um, fish. You know, generally the earliest ice off, sometimes mid, mid May, sometimes mid June. Always fish is good, right? When that inlet comes in right there, early season, and the outlet. Favorite flies in there are going to be tan caddises and pink San Juan worms. One mile above Fern Lake is Lake Odessa. Lake Odessa doesn't have near the amount of fish that Fern does, but so it has, probably has a little better size to them. Get them up to about 14 inches in there. Out of all the high mountain lakes, you always want to look for logs down in the water. That's where more bug life is. And hang some more fish. This guy's fishing past the logs. He should be fishing behind him. You can see some fish there next to the logs. And always, if you see fish rising, go for them. So Griffith's gnat works. If, if the fish are tough on ants and beetles or something big, go with the Griffith's gnat. Right before you get to uh, um, Mont, or not right before you get to Fern Lake, there's a turnoff for Spruce Lake. It's about 0.8 miles from Fern Lake to get to Spruce, or 4.8 miles total. Uh, Spruce Lake is the highest density population of fish in the park, so it's loaded with fish, and hence they're not going to be as big. Maybe up to 10 inches out of Spruce. Very easy to catch them. Watch though, like these guys are out here wading in it. I wouldn't get out there and wade in the water, at least without waders on, because there's leeches everywhere out there. So they'll be loaded on your legs when you come out. You can, if you walk around towards the inlet of Spruce Lake and go straight up the hill, you'll come to Primrose Pond about a half mile up, and it's pretty much straight uphill. Uh, Primrose Pond is loaded with little cutthroats up to about 12 inches, a little bit bigger than Spruce Lake. You go another eighth of a mile past that, follow a little creek up, you'll come to Loomis Lake. Loomis Lake is a deep lake, not a lot of fish in it, hence it'll be bigger fish, up to about 14 inches. Favorite fly up in, well, one of my favorite flies for all the park is the variable bends. All right, next drainage is going to be the Poudre River drainage. So if you take a, a trail ridge road up and over the hill, you'll come to the um, Continental Divide. Right there at the Continental Divide, there's a trailhead right at Poudre Lake. This is Poudre Lake. Poudre Lake, you would not think would have any fish. You can see the bottom of it as you drive by, but it does have brook trout that somehow survive in it. It's not that great to fish, but you can catch little brookies up to about six inches. If you follow the outlet out of uh, Poudre Lake, that's the start of the Poudre River. I would have hiked at least three miles down before I started fishing it, and then it's pretty good. My favorite area to fish this section is to go to Chapin Pass up on uh, Old Fall River Road, the dirt road, road. Once you get to Chapin Pass, you'll hike up and over Chapin Pass and then down Chapin Creek. Follow Chapin Creek all the way to the Pooter, and that's probably my favorite area to fish it. It's about a two mile hike to get there. Addie, you're up. So this is Addie's part here. Okay, that's me. Like a long, how long ago was this? Two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, I'm having a blast. Maybe, probably not. I'm not having a great time right now. My backpack is so heavy. I almost feel like you put bowling balls in it to trick me. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm, I'm having a time. but I'm sobbing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot better when you get to the camp, though. There's lots of fish. Too many. There's lots of brook trout in the little streams nearby. Be a nice area to fish.
And there's moose everywhere up in that area. At least that's what we saw. Tons of big bulls. All right, so my favorite area in the my lake in the park, my favorite lake in the park is Arrowhead Lake. Okay. Go start there at that Poudre Lake. If you don't and then just hike straight up towards Mount Ida. Mount Ida is a 4.4 mile hike. Follow the trail all the way up to the top. And then look over the edge, you'll see these two lakes, King Coral and Azure Lake. Don't want to fish those ones. They don't have any fish. So walk down the arm to the left, kind of bushwhacking it now. You go about a mile down that arm and you'll see a lake that looks like an arrowhead. Once you get about halfway across it, you're going to hike straight down to it. It's about an 800 foot drop to get down there from that top of that ridge, but it's awesome in there. You can't camp in this area. All you can do is day hike it pretty much. You can camp down at the bottom of the valley, but that's almost a harder hike to get up there. So you want to get going early in the morning, at least five or five o'clock in the morning, fish till about two, and then hike out. But they're really pretty cutthroats up in there. Here's some cutthroats that caught during a hailstorm. Get them all the way up, up to about 18 inches out of there. Favorite thing to do is just spot fish. Um, do an orange stimmy, drop it with a little pheasant tail, and look for fish. See a lot of mountain sheep in the area. Timber Lake. To get to Timber Lake, you can go up and over Trail Ridge Road, come down, and then there's a trail heading for Timber Lake on the left if you're coming from Estes Park, and then trail heading for the Colorado River Trailhead on the right. Park in that trailhead, hike 4.4 miles up to Timber Lake. It's about a 2,000 foot elevation gain, so pretty, pretty hefty hike. But it's uh, got tall Colorado River cutthroats up in there, up to about 14 inches. Easy access lakes in the park. There's really only one. It's uh, Spruce Lake, Sprague Lake. To get to Sprague Lake, you're going to go into the park, turn left. I mean, do 36 entrance, turn left on Bear Lake Road, and then you'll see a sign for Sprague Lake Park there. This is an old fishing lodge lake, so it's a man made lake. It has two sandbars that go all the way across it, and you can walk out all the way across the lake and cast on both sides. It drops off fairly deep and just practice casting and hopefully catch fish. Lily Lake used to be an old, a big drive to lake that had cutthroats in it. After the 2013 flood, for some reason, it messed up everything in the lake and the fish had winter killed since then. And they have not re replaced the fish in the lake. So right now, Lily Lake has no fish off of Highway 7. We continue on up Highway 7, there's a turnoff for Long Speak. Park at Long Speak, you go 4.4 miles to the Chasm Lake um, turnoff. Turn off on that, go about a half mile where my backpack is here, and then you're going to walk straight down the hill from there to Peacock Pool. Peacock Pool is the only lake in the area that has fish, and uh, it's not that great, but it has cutthroats up to about eight inches in it. Glacier Creek is the next drainage we're going to talk about. To get there, you're going to go to the kind of busiest part of the park. You're going to go up to Bear Lake. To get well, as you're driving up there, you're going to be following Glacier Creek along the way. This section here, you're going to start at Glacier Gorge Trail Lake. You're going to hike uh, 0.9 miles to Alberta Falls and then hike up above the falls. And you got about a half mile of stream with cascading pools like this, all the way up to the next waterfall at the top, which looks like this. This area is pretty tight. A lot of water comes through the early season. So I wouldn't start fishing this section until, um, until August. But one of my favorite areas to fish is this section of the uh, Glacier Creek. So anything, the water's really bubbly, flies kind of disappear in it. So anything with a bright hot wing or anything that floats really good, like the Kudabah caddis is a good fly to use in there. Dream Lake, so this is an easy access high mountain lake. To get there, you're gonna go all the way to Bear Lake, park at Bear Lake, hike one mile up, you'll come to Dream Lake. It's right after Nymph Lake, Nymph Lake's a half mile up, has lily palm pads on it, so keep going and you'll come up to Dream Lake. Dream Lake um, is a tough lake to fish from shore because everybody goes up there and fishes it and the fish seem to be pretty savvy along the edges. So what I like to do, since it's a shorter hike, is to take a belly boat up there and get out in the middle and the fish seem to be a little easier to get. If you do not go up with a belly boat, I would make sure you have a transparent ant. If you're fishing it from the edge, 
Um, this is the sunken app. What you want to do is cast it out, let it sink all the way to the bottom. You see a fish cruise along, you just want to twitch it. They will normally go pick it up from the bottom. Line across the surface on those high mountain lakes sometimes scares fish away, especially the one that's got a lot of pressure on it. So if you can sink a fly like an ant, it'll work real well. This is Lake Hyana. It's one mile above Green Lake. Um, it, we get a lot of people come into our shop and say, we went up there and fished, not Lake Hyana. This is half, um, that one in my lake here. Emerald. This is Emerald Lake is one mile above it. In Emerald Lake, we get a lot of people who come in and say they caught, they couldn't catch anything out of Emerald Lake. It wasn't fishing any good. Well, it's because it has no fish in it. So there's over 200 fish, 200 lakes in the park, and only uh, 72 of them have fish. So come on into the shop. We'll tell you which one's got the fish in it. Right before you get to Dream Lake, there's a turnoff for Lake Hayaha. You go another 1.2 miles, you'll come to Lake Hayaha. Um, it's a 2.2 mile total to get to Lake Iowa, and it's got big boulders all the way around the lake, so it's really hard to fish from shore again. So if you can yeah, track up a belly boat, it's well worth it. They seem to like the red butt transparent end of that lake. All right, so same trailhead, pretty much from Glacier Gorge Trailhead. You're going to hike up past Alberta Falls, another mile past there. You go back two miles, you have a junction for Mills Lake on your left and Lock Lake on your right. If you continue up Lock Lake, you'll go 3.3 miles, you'll come to Lock Lake total. Um, it's a great, one of my favorite high mountain lakes that's fairly close, that has good sized cutthroats. You can get them all the way up to about 16 inches in there on occasion, generally about 14 inches on them. Real pretty fish in there. Just look for them and cast them. They don't seem to be as picky in Lock. Ants work real good there. If you follow Icy Brook up, the stream is surprisingly good with good sized fish that run out of the lake up there and kind of stay up there all year. So you can catch 14 inch cutthroats out of this little tiny creek for about a mile. You continue on up past Icy Brook or past Lock, you'll go two miles, you have the Lake of the Glass. Lake of the Glass is all brook trout in it. It's five miles total to get to the Lake of the Glass. And we've well, got an eighth of a mile past that is Sky Pond, and Sky Pond is all brook trout. So Lake of the Glass all cuts roads, Sky Pond is all brook trout. And I don't know how they don't intermix in between the two, but there must be some reason they, the water must go under, underground or something there. All right, so if you go on the junction, when you get back down to the Mills Lake and Lock Lake Junction, if you turn left, you'll go 2.7 miles total to get to Mills Lake. The Mills Lake fish is best for where the log jams are in them, so there's more bug life. Like a little pheasant tail or a copper beaded micro fly works really good as a dropper. Two miles above that is Black Lake. Black Lake's all brook trout and fish as well, up to about 10 inches, I would say. All right, if you go up and over Trail Ridge Road to the west side of the park, you come to the Hanawichi Valley where the Colorado runs through. The best fish in there for good sized fish is find some cut off oxbows. So these are like pretty much lakes now that where the river used to go and old channel of the river. That's where the bigger fish are. You can get generally some brown trout up to 16 inches out of those cut off oxbows. If you fish the mainstream, it's a great area to take kids pretty much start mid July on. Um, little fish, but lots of them, just action all over the place. A bunch of little ones there. If you continue on up the Colorado River Trail, if you go 2.2 miles, you'll come to Old Lulu City, which was an old mining camp back in the late 1800s. And this is kind of wide area like this. What I like to do is cast downstream in this area, up against those uh, cut banks. And this next video is going to show you what that'll look like. You don't need to worry about the sound on this one. So cast them downstream here, just let it sit on the surface, and there you came up and just for some reason, the fish don't seem to they don't spook in these areas, but they don't seem to worry about just standing right above them. They'll come hit the fly anyways. A little brook trout in there, maybe up to six inches. Sometimes you'll catch a brown up there, and rarely, every once in a while, you'll catch a cut trout. If you continue on up that trail, you'll come to the Chinese ditch. Chinese ditch is an old ditch that was made back in the early, early 30s to steal water from the west slope and put it on the, on the east slope. 
So the ditch goes is uh, actually the inlet to Long Draw Reservoir, which is up the Poudre Canyon, kind of the start of the Poudre River. Uh, so the fish will run out of Long Draw Reservoir up this ditch. So what I'll do is I'll go to Lulu City, hike another two miles up, get to the ditch, and then follow the ditch back south. And then there's another connecting trail that will take you back to the trailhead. Uh, it's kind of fun. You can walk that and just spot fish. And there's good sized cutthroats in there. I've gotten them all the way up to 18 inches out of there. And you're just walking along looking for fish and then cast to them. If you find them, you'll catch them. There's not a ton. So like for two miles of walking along there, if I see 16 or 17 fish, that's a big day. But generally you can catch all 16 or 17 of them. They're pretty, they're pretty eager, eager. Even if you miss on the first time and spook them, they'll swim around, stop, cast them again, they'll hit it again. So big size fish up in there. Next drainage that we're going to talk about is the North Inlet and Tanahutu Creek. To get there, you're going to go into Grand Lake, park at the North Inlet Trailhead. Um, and first, we're going to talk about the Tanahutu. So you'll take the trailhead, Tanahutu Trailhead from North Inlet. Follow it up maybe half mile and pop in this trees here, fish as well right here. The trees are all burned now though, so um, not quite the same. This area really got hit by the flood. It did lose a lot of fish. I did get up there fishing some. I would say not near as good a fishing as it was before the flood, but they're still fishing. And there used to be these old wooden um, pipe pipelines up there that made still water for Grand Lakes water source up there. Those are all burned now too. Just a little, little brook trout in there. Uh, one of my favorite areas up in there is Big Meadows. So to get to Big Meadows, you're gonna start at Green River Trail Lane. You're gonna hike two miles up and over the ridge to get to Big Meadows. Um, Big Meadows is a good area to camp overnight. Last year, this area was all affected by the burn. So it's closed to um, day hikers, but if you did an overnight trip, they'd let you in there. It was kind of nice. And hopefully they'll do that again this next year. So if you get an overnight campsite in there, you can get the whole area all to yourself. They'll let you camp in there in the fire burn area. It's actually pretty up in there. The grass has really come back. My son Luke fishing up in there. It's just loaded with a little brook trout up in there. And we are camping up in there. Some cool, cool campsites up in that section. If you continue on up that trail, you'll go seven and a half miles. You'll come to Lake Hayaha. Um, lake Hayaha is the best lake on the west side of the park, I would say, in my opinion. Um, good sized cutthroats in it. Colorado River cuts all the way up to 18 inches out of it. There's three lakes. The lower two lakes are smaller fish, eight to 12 inches in it. And then the upper lake has fish. That's the middle lake there. This is the upper lake. Upper lake has fish all the way over 18 inches. Real good sized cutthroats in there. If you go out the, the main trail there from, from um, Grand Lake at the North Inlet, you'll have the North Inlet Creek that you'll be following up. This is five miles up to the North Inlet Falls, but the river all the way up to there fishes well. Late season, this thing can really get going fast with water. So I would wait till August before I fish any of the river up in there. But load, load with brook trout and cutthroat the further you go up. If you go on up that main trail, you go about, about six miles and there's a turn up, but there's a creek coming in on your left called Tarmigan Creek. Kind of a hidden lake up there is Bench Lake. If you follow Tarmigan Creek straight up, there's no trail, just follow the creek straight up the hill. Maybe about a 500 foot climb uphill. In about a half mile, you'll come to Bench Lake loaded with little pretty, pretty little cutthroats in it. Uh, Colorado River cuts, real pretty fish, up to about eight inches, I'd say. If you continue up the main trail, the next lake that's fishable is Lake Manita. 12 miles total get to Manita, but there's some great campsites up by it. This area didn't get affected by the fire, didn't make it to this area, so the lake should, is still good. All Colorado River cuts in there, up to about 14 inches. All right, if you go into Grand Lake and go all the way around into East Inlet, East Inlet didn't get hit by the fire at all. Fish is just the same as it did before. One of my favorite areas to fish is right below Adams Falls. So that's uh, the fish from Grand Lake will run up there like the rainbows and stuff. 
and can't get past that falls. So it's normally got a lot of fish right in below the falls and the holes below that too. And then late in the fall, we even got lakers up in there, cut lakers in that section and caught some really good sized brown trout. So this next spot here, we're, and then right above Adams Falls is Big Meadows. Big Meadows is a slow meandering section of the river, kind of like Moraine Park, about a half mile hike to get to Big Meadows. Um, it's easy fishing, lots of brook trout. They're not that spooky. They seem to hit well, even in low water. If you continue on up the trail, you'll come to Ptarmigan Lake. Just go past Ptarmigan Lake, it's no good. And then about five miles up, there's a little, little kind of pond and rock slide thing. I know it's kind of vague, but there's a trail that goes, not, not even a trail, a rock turn thing and a ridge on your right. It's a 2,000 foot climb up and over the hill. You'll come to Ten Lakes Park. And only one of the, there's 10 lakes in there, but only one has fish in it. And that's Ten Lakes Park, and it is not worth the hike, but it does have some pretty fish in it. That's probably the most remote area in the park I know of for fishing. But if you stay on the main trail, you'll go seven miles or come to Lake Verna. Great area to camp right there, loaded with little brook trout up to about eight inches. You continue on up above. Burn up all the creek up, you'll come to the third lake, then there's fourth lake, and then there's fifth lake. Fifth lake doesn't have very many fish in it. The other lakes are all brook trout, but fifth lake does have cutthroat in it. And again, a lake without a lot of fish in it normally has some pretty good sized cutthroats in it. Only one time I ever caught a fish up there, and that was the time right there. But he was worth it. So there you can see from the top of the ridge there, Verna is the lowest. And there's third and then there's fourth. And fifth's kind of up around the corner there. What we'll do a lot here is we'll hike up to Verna, stay there a night or two, and then you'll hike up from uh, fourth lake straight up the ridge, kind of to where we are right here. And we'll go over the other side, see a lot of mountain sheep up in there. Look over the other side, and that's Thunder, Thunder Lake at the bottom and Lake of the Wind. So you can connect the Wild Basin sign or the other side of the park from that way. So that brings us to Wild Basin entrance to the park. We go Highway 7 all the way down to Wild Basin, which is about 20 minutes from Estes Park. Go into the park right there. And this is Copeland Lake. To get to Copeland Lake, it's right at the entrance of the park. It's actually a dam for water for Longmont. It's a pretty shallow lake. It's got big fish in it. The park has it listed as barren, but it, I know otherwise there's some big browns in it, but that's about it. Pretty hard to get them most of the time, though. Right there at that entrance is a uh, trailhead for Sand Beach Lake. Sand Beach Lake is a 4.4 mile hike to get up to Sand Beach. It's a real pretty lake. It's a, not the easiest fishing lake. If you catch 10 fish in a day, it's a pretty good day. Fish up to about 10 inches out of Sand Beach. If you fish the same brain right there where you go in by Copeland Lake, it fishes great there in the meadow early season during runoff. The further you go up and you cross the, the, the river on the bridge there, and really good pocket water from there on up starting in like July. And then you go on up to Copeland Falls, hike maybe a, a third of a mile. I like to fish right above Copeland Falls or below it. And that fish as well, late season, mid July on. And then if you continue on up the trail, you'll come to Calypso Cascade. That's 1.8 miles up the trail is Calypso Cascade. It doesn't look like it's very fishable, but behind every boulder on the left or on the right, right where there's soft water, there's always a little cut through. If you continue up the main trail, you'll come to Oozle Falls. That's 2.7 miles to get to Oozle Falls. You don't want to fish right here. You want to hike up and around the falls to the left, push back about a third of a mile, and then get up here to a fire barn. This was an old fire that went through in 1982, took out the trees, created a lot easier casting areas, and then created all these plunge pools on, on Oozle Creek. And it's loaded with brook trout. Each, each of those holes probably has like 50 little brook trout in it and they're eager to go fight after your fly. Yellow skinnies work really good up in there. We continue up the main trail to Oozle Lake. It's five miles total to get to Oozle. Um, loaded with mostly brook trout, but it does have a few cut trips in it as well. If you continue, if you don't turn off the Oozle Lake and you just go straight up the trail, you'll go 7.2 miles and come to Thunder Lake. Thunder Lake's the only lake in the park I know that has snake river cuts in it. 
you can get those snake river cuts all the way up to 18 inches out of there. It's also got kind of greenback, Yellowstone cut hybrid in there. So the fish are really pretty out of Thunder Lake. Royal wolves work, work real well in there. If you go around the outlet of um, Thunder, there's some rock turns that kind of stay on the same ridge, same about the same elevation as Thunder, kind of walk around the bowl and you'll see bench lake back or box lake back in there. The box is loaded with little brook trout in it, some of the prettiest fish in the park, I would say, real pretty cutthroats, up to about eight inches. All right, now the furthest south section of the park is um, Hutchinson Lake area and Hare Lake. To get there, you're going to start at Allen's Park Trail Lake, at um, Allen's Park Trail Lake from Allen's Park area. You'll hike up four miles, you'll come to Fitch Lake. Fitch Lake doesn't have new fish, you just keep going. And then you'll cross Coney Creek. It does have fish in Coney Creek, but it's really not worth it. So keep hiking. And you'll come to Pear Lake. Pear Lake is six miles total. You can camp there at Pear Lake and fish Pear, and then maybe you're going to want to hike up to Hutchinson. But Pear Lake fish is decent. You'll get cutthroat in up to about 14 inches. And there's kind of a bushwhack trail that goes up to Hutchinson Lake. This is Lower Hutchinson. There's three Hutchinson lakes. The Lower Lake is the only lake I know that has freshwater shrimp in it. So the fish that you catch there are going to be really bright colors, almost dark purples on their bellies. Really pretty fish up to about 14 inches out of Hutchinson. You can cap at, at Hutchinson. There's a cross country zone. If you talk to the Sweet Talk of the Park, Park Service, they'll let you do that. And then there's Middle and Upper Hutchinson lakes that are loaded with fish up to about 10 inches. So we do a lot of backpacking trips um, for our shop. So we supply 10 sleep bags, all the meals, all the gear for two, actually $2.95 uh, per person per day. Um, my mom does all the, uh, the meals for those trips. So my daughter always asks me how much we pay her and I say, she's mom <laughs> or grandma. So we also do llama pack trips in the park. The llamas will carry the gear for you. On those trips, we said, there's my son, who he kind of looks like a llama there. Kids under 60 pounds can ride a llama and feed them. We supply all the tents, the bags, all the meals for $3.95 per person per day. And we also have a lot of private water access on the Big Thompson and, and on, we also have a shop in Grand Lake on the Colorado and um, several different leases on the Colorado. We got two miles of the Colorado that we lease, and we got over four miles of the Big Thompson and over nine different lakes that we lease for fishing. So these guys here, they caught a fish right offshore right away. So they had to keep up with the ante. So then they had to go out to belly boats and that was just getting too easy. So they decided, let's just swim for it. <laughs> and there's my daughter. We also got a lot of bluegill ponds and bass ponds that are just easy for catching and getting out on little paddle boards or belly boats, swimming around. This is them out there on the, the belly, on the paddle boards, trying to catch the fish. This one, they, the net was a little too short and just had the fish dangling there. We also do float trips over on the Colorado. You go on a float trip with me, have my dog Tally there with you. So we kind of go into your pump house. So if you catch a fish, you got to hold up the dog and the fish to see which is bigger. And this is Tally uh, barking at a bear as we're going down. She's pretty, she's tougher than, than she thinks. Here's a, uh, and so we also got a, Special here for you guys if you want. It's $450 for a float for the year. Um, normally it's $600 for that. So you can call the shop tomorrow and get you that deal and send it to you. Um, it's good for the whole year. You can use it anytime. Or we got a four hour float for $350 down the Colorado, kind of by pump house area. There's a video on the Colorado there. Trying to give you a little narration of it. That was earlier season, the water's a little muddy down in there. But we can also do overnight um, um, float trips down here on the Colorado and camp and fish as we go.
the train that follows it along. Our permitted section is about 20 miles from Pump Pass down to the low state bridge, so we can put it in any of those areas. Go ahead and skip that one, go to the next one here. So our special number two is a uh, um, one person four hour trip. You just gotta use it before the end of June. Generally a one person four hour is 250. Uh, do it for you guys for 125. You buy it now, you can reserve. You just gotta use it before the end of June. Or if you don't, we'll just do it the next year before the end of June. And here's a little video. I'm fishing the Big Thompson, kind of more of what you would be using that, that coupon for. This is actually one of our private waters on there on the upper Big T. This is called Grandpa's Retreat. It's got some good water in there. So there's some pretty good sized fish down on the big chomps in there. And that will do. Thanks for having me. Questions for Kirk? Yeah. Where are your bass and bluegill ponds? It's actually uh, Sylvandale, kind of near Sylvandale Ranch near Loveland. Okay. Yeah, so about 30 minutes from the shop. We have to come to Essence first and then go to. No, we'll meet you wherever you want to go. So we can meet you down there. Take you to it. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Jerry, is it raffle time? Sure. Mr. Pickett, Don't forget the free stuff from the last.